CS183S lecture number 10, the top 10 lies that prospects tell us. By lies meaning ways that the prospect is trying to get out of having to buy something from you. So some of these will be actually super compelling uh, partial truths. Nonetheless, a partial truth is still a lie. So here are a couple uh, lies. And there's a corresponding blog post if you want to read along. Top 10 lie. We do our budgets quarterly. Call us back in 90 days. <laughs> this makes me laugh. We do our budgets quarterly. People that say budgets, okay, that's an immediate flag to they're trying to get rid of you. We do our budgets quarterly. They either do their budgets daily or never because they're basically saying... Yeah, and then to say that to call us in 90 days is classic. Any kind of word that says 90 days, they're just trying to get rid of you right now. So that's definitely a lie. Top 10 lie. We printed out your PDF. It's on the table. We will. That will go to committee. It sounds so good, doesn't it? You want to believe it. Um, you finally get them on the phone because you're persistent and you've been using the the Larry Chang persistence model. And then they say something like, oh yeah, we print out your PDF. It's going to go to committee. The word committee is an immediate non-starter. The opposite of buying. Because they're trying to use something called higher authority. And Tom Hopkins talks about it. Uh, how to master the art of selling when somebody's using higher authority on you that's a lie it's partially true but it's still a lie procedurally we need to do an RFP I'd lose my job if I just bought from you now <laughs> these are great by the way procedurally we need to do an RFP their role is vice president. Their role is co-founder. Their role is some alpha role. And you're going to tell me that they need to follow some kind of procedure? Majority of work that goes on, deals that get done, there's no rhyme or no reason. And there's definitely no procedure to how the deal got done. So when they say procedurally, uh, and also I'd lose my job, <laughs> no. A person who says, oh, I'd lose my job, that's actually a person who literally can never lose their job because they're always covering their butt, CYA. So when they talk about it, that's just an, it's not an outright lie, but like great lies, it's 90% truth. Procedurally, uh, we can't do this, uh, need, to, need, to, need to check with other people. This next lie is, it's good. It needs to go to legal. It needs to go to legal. My question to you is, oh my God, did you not even take CS183S? There's no contract, okay? So when they say, oh, it needs to go to legal, they actually sort of uh, mean it. And your deal's going to die. Because legal, if legal had their way, Nothing would get done, so that way there'd be no risk, no downside, and no liability. So when they say it needs to go to legal, you really need to look at uh, actually the next following lecture, lecture number 11, which are two things, internal escrow, one-way letter of intent. But that's not this lecture. This lecture is hilarious lies that you hear. And when they, people say it needs to go to legal, it doesn't need to go to legal. There's something wrong with how you set it up, and your deal's not going to get done. Top 10 lie. I'm getting promoted and we are hiring someone. This is all from my Twitter, by the way. I'm getting promoted and we are hiring someone that will be in charge of this. You will be our first call. <laughs> Classic. Classic. Meaning, I'm almost going to retire, get promoted, sell my company, work at another division. But I will for sure tell the new person coming in, to buy from you.
people that want to make a mark with doing something great with your company, they'll do it now. They'll get the deal done and then hand off the the S storm to the new person. Okay, that's what corporate corporates do constantly, all the time, which is get something done, take credit for it. Okay, anoint it as. This is our gig. This is what we vendor we found to buy to do this innovation. So they're if they're not buying, they're definitely not telling the next guy, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. buy from these people that I don't even trust to do my own deal. The new person's not gonna do it. We've totally heard of you, top ten line. We've totally heard of you. We obviously like it. Contractually, we have to sit tight with our current supplier. Contractually, we have to sit tight with our current supplier means I don't trust the new people. Now, if you are curious enough to stick around for lecture number 11, everyone's constantly saying we're currently happy with our current suppliers. So that way, their butt's not on the hook for switching to a new thing. They don't want to switch to that because they could get, literally they could get fired for bad results. That's why lecture 11 talks about second supplier gambit. Second supplier gambit. I don't want to replace your current supplier. I want to be your second supplier. I want to service your account. I want to give you mentorship. I want to help you better operate under the constraints that you have now and therefore transition better using something called second supplier gambit. I think Bob Sutton taught that to me initially. Don't quote me. When the business climate warms, this is a lie. When the business climate warms, we can take action. It's blaming the economy. Top 10 lie. When you're in town next, we should meet. Let us know and we can meet. When you're in town next is incredibly dangerous because you're, you're in essence not committing to them. You're committing to them but they're not at all committing to you. If they committed to you, they would come to you. Uh, if they committed, they would feel like they're on the hook to do a deal by saying, uh, we're going to do this deal. Why don't we get this deal going by doing meeting? Versus the, when are you in town next? When are you in town next? We should meet. They want to get information about what you're going to mentor them on but not be on the hook for the obligation to buy. This is America, and if you fly five people out for two days and I meet with you, I'm going to be obligated to buy from you. I don't know how other countries work, but there's an obligation in America. Now, the reason it's a lie is they're trying to remove that obligation of buying because they have no intention of buying, which is why this makes that kind of lie such a sexy, awesome lie because it's filled with hope, hope that you'll sell them, hope for a new sale, hope that you'll your startup will get a new deal. Hopefully some of these lies uh, will help. Um, hopefully some of them at least have been entertaining, but they definitely build up to lecture number 11, which is two lectures, uh, lectures five and lectures 11, which is how actually to sell your own startup stuff either now or in the future. Those are the only two lectures where you're selling something that you yourself made. All the other 18 lectures for CS183S are selling things that you yourself did not code or make.